Welcome to another video on Data to Decisions. In today's video, we'll be building a 100% stacked column chart, including the total on the top of the columns. Now, how are we going to build this? Before we get started, I want to explain the context for this chart. So the data that I'm showing here is some completely random data on surveys. So let's say, for example, a company sends out a survey asking how satisfied their customers are with the product. Now, every year the company collects this data from the customers and it records the data. The number of customers, let's say, for example, in 2018, who actually responded with very dissatisfied response was 11. Dissatisfied was 13, neutral was 10, satisfied 8, and very satisfied is 15. So in this case, uh, I actually have a total column here, so should show that. So we can see here that out of the 57 respondents, 13 were dissatisfied and 11 were very dissatisfied. In 2023, again, the same concept applies, but note that the number of people who responded to the survey is a lot higher, 107. So in this case, just because 13 people got dissatisfied, let me just highlight these two numbers, 13 people dissatisfied in 2023, 13 in 20, 20, 2018 doesn't mean it's the same because the denominator or the number of people who responded to the survey is a lot higher this time. So the dissatisfaction just by looking at these two numbers is not the same. It's actually less relatively because you have the total respondents number being different. In such cases, if we do just a stacked column chart, it may not be very easy to find that. But by converting them into percentages, it's a little bit easier to clearly visually represent that. For example, the same 30, if you see in this 100% stack column chart, the 13 takes up much bigger per portion of this column, the entire column, whereas the same 13 in 2023 is not taking up that much of a portion of that stack column. And this is where the 100% stack column charts are helpful. Because if you notice, all the columns will always be same height, they represent 100%. Excel will automatically calculate the percentages and make sure that the total column is 100% and the individual values will be automatically calculated behind the scenes and represented in size of the columns. Now, I'm going to build this chart from scratch. So we'll learn how to build this chart. But before that, it's very important to understand when to use this chart and compare it to the stack column. When do you use the 100% stack? Stack columns are great because the total height of the stack column will be different across the categories. And so you can see how they are different. But in a 100% stack column, they're always the same height. So you can't differentiate between the absolute totals. And that's why I want to just show the totals at the top. I know that the totals don't represent any visual here, but at least it gives me the context for how many people responded in 2018 survey versus 2023. So this is what we'll be building today. So let's get started from raw data. So I have the similar survey results data. In your case, uh, if you don't have these five uh, different levels, you may have you know three levels or four levels, the same concept applies. Um, I, I want to highlight one of the little quirks that I saw when we were creating these type of charts. So let's see how it works. I have the year, I have the five levels, and I have the number of people responded. Note that these are absolute numbers. We don't convert into percentage yet. We just have the absolute numbers. We have the absolute totals. Great. Now, if I select all of these, I'm not going to include the total for now. I'm just going to select everything else. Insert go to 100% stack column, okay? So you see that Excel automatically puts year as one of the columns, which is not what I want, because Excel, um, for some reason, doesn't want to consider this as the x-axis. Instead, it automatically does it because it's uh, the column values look like numbers, and so Excel treats it differently. Even if you change it to the text format, that's kind of how it behaves. Uh, so I'll give you an example here. If I change this to A, B, C, let's, for example, uh, that's not what I wanted it. Let's do that quickly. Now, once I have 
this type of data where the first column is a text, really text values only. Then I go insert 100% stacked. Now you see how Excel created that chart. It actually created it correctly by putting A, B, C, D, E, F, which are, again, I'll change it, but you see that it is correctly putting all the five different series as very dissatisfied, dissatisfied about. This is exactly what you want. But why Excel doesn't you know, agree with that? Maybe there's a trick that I don't know. Uh, I'm happy to learn if you know how to do it. But if I type in 2018 now, it will accept. So if I do 2018, 2019, you see that the chart no, still works. There we go. So this is a little trick. I mean, again, uh, in your case, if you want to display year or, or any numeric value in the uh, x-axis, you may need this trick. In your case, let's say these are all different products, product A, B, C, D, E, F. Then Excel will automatically pick it up correctly. No problem. Uh, this is something that I recently came across, just wanted to share. So I'm going to, let's start at the end of the first step. You should have a chart like this which is the x-axis and the five different series I have, very dissatisfied, dissatisfied, neutral, satisfied, very satisfied. For example, when I click on the lowest one, the blue, it is very dissatisfied. And then I have the satisfied, neutral, satisfied, and very satisfied. It is in the right order. To remember here is that when we add a total series, we want these numbers to actually go on top of these columns. Remember that all these columns they end at 100%. So I want the total to go even above that. That's the way I want it to be displayed. I don't want it to clutter uh, in between somewhere in the middle. I want it to go on the top. So for this, I would like to create a position series. And this position is nothing but, I always want it to be 110%. Okay, so I'm just going to type 110%. And you'll see how or why we needed to do this. So now I'm going to say select data add a new series and this is the position series and I'm going to select all these values 110% right so now you can see that nothing has happened and that's because 110% I'll show you where it is but uh, before that change the chart type and I actually want the everything else can be the stacked 100% stacked but I want the position to be in the secondary axis. This is important. Put them into secondary axis and it can be a line. That's okay for now. Um, and now we have something like this. Now click on it, control one to open the format. And now I'm going to go to the position series and I don't want a line, but I want a label. So I'm going to click here, the plus add label and it'll add me a label. Great, they are making progress. Now I want the label to be on the top. So click on the labels, go here, label options, go to above and I will move it to the above. So far good. So next thing I'm gonna do is to click on the secondary axis, make sure that the minimum is set to zero and maximum is set to 1.1, which is 110%, right? And then the major unit should be I want it to be 0.2. So make it 0.3 and then change it to 0.2 because sometimes Excel doesn't want it like that. So I'm going to do 0.2. And what happens here is the now you can see the secondary axis. It starts from 0, 20%, 40, 60, 80, 100. And then there is a little gap. And that's because the maximum is 110%. I'm going to do exactly the same on the primary axis. Click on the primary axis. Go and set this to 1.1 and then set this to zero. And then this one, uh, it or already is doing that, but I like to just make sure it always does it. Because I, I like to see this reset button here. That means that we have manually changed it and it is gonna fix that uh, at point two. So now everything looks good. So now I'm gonna click on this and delete the secondary axis because I don't need it anymore, okay? And you can see here that the labels went actually above uh, I'm going to change my previous option. Instead of above, let's bring it to center. And that brings it up here. And I'm going to move the legend to the top. There we go. So now you can start seeing that our chart is looking like the right chart that we want. And we have the title. We can enter just the word satisfaction trends by here. 
So then I can do this, formatting a little bit of the title. Um, I'm going to move the title here. And important thing is remove the position CDs in the legend. We don't need the user to see that because that's being done only to enable us to put the total. So one thing I totally forgot about is this percentage label. I wanted to say 110%. And I actually wanted to say the total value. So it's very easy. Excel has this wonderful option to go to label options and remove the value and add value from cells. I can now choose this and select the total values. And now I'll hit OK. So now actually the total values appear instead of the percentages. Right click, format grid lines, solid line, the standard formatting that we do in every chart. Uh, if you want to add the x axis title, you can. Uh, and then the y axis title, you can by choosing it. In my case, it's very clear what it is by the title. So I'm not going to add x axis and y axis title. Um, and then I'm going to click on the chart, do a border. I will make these are all the borders. Now they look like this. Um, ignore all this data here. This was for me to try to illustrate to you that if the value is text in your first column, Excel will work fine. If you end up doing a number, then all that trick that I explained at the beginning becomes necessary, unfortunately, uh, in order for our chart to look like this. So I also want to say, uh, to finish off this video, that these values here are actually um, absolute values. Excel doesn't actually allow you to give a percentage. Even though it is calculating the percentage behind the scenes, there is no way that I could find that Excel will allow you to add the labels here. So for example, um, you can add data labels by clicking here. And these labels are actually uh, absolute values. They're not percentages. In order for you to create percentage, we actually have to calculate the percentage and build a chart using that data. So for example, I'm gonna just clear these values. You don't need them. I can now say this very dissatisfied equals C4 divided by the total. And I'm gonna lock the column H. Okay, so column H is locked. Uh, and then this gives us a percentage. So very dissatisfied 11 is 19% of the total. So if I do this, uh, when I add these, I'll get 100%. So that's what it is. So now I can further go here. I think we have six. Um, so I'm going to go all the way here. So important thing here is to make sure um, your calculations are correct. So C5 by H5, then D5 by H5. So clearly it's working. Let me just do one final check. I will do this to make it 100%. Great. So everything is adding up to 100%. So this is truly the actual percentage values, right? So if I if I wanted to build a chart, I'll actually have to build a chart using this data. Um, so let me see what is the easiest way to do it. I'll bring the year again. Uh, I'll bring it this here. So for example, if I select all these, and if I do a new stacked you know, column, and now if I add a data label here, now these will represent. This is exactly what I'm trying to illustrate. If you want the percentages to appear here, then you have to calculate the percentage and then build a chart off of that. Uh, for example, this orange thing, um, let's just show. 2018, it's 13, but here it's 23%. And that's because this is the percentage of the total for that year. So please note this. Uh, if you want the percentage to be displayed, you have to calculate and then do it. If you have any questions about what we covered in this video, how to build a 100% stacked um, column chart with the total, please let me know. If you have any suggestions to make it better, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.